Good afternoon everyone and welcome to this PGA webinar. My name is Michael Abbott and I'm the Member Education Executive here at the PGA. Uh, it's my pleasure today to introduce our speaker, Lorna Sheldon. Lorna, are you there? I am here, Michael, yes. Excellent. Just to give you a little bit of background information about Lorna, um, previously she has run a very successful engineering firm. She has held the position of Chief Executive Officer. Uh, worked within the charity world raising in excess of three million pounds and was also the runner-up in the National Businesswoman of the Year Award. It's through this experience that Lorna has developed a greater understanding of the requirements needed within the business world to deliver effective presentations and communicate effectively with others. Um, as a result of this, Lorna set up her training company over 22 years ago and since then she has trained uh, well, worked in over 26 countries, training over 37,000 people. Lorna is here today to talk about her seminar, Presentations to Persuade and Influence, which is part of our member education offering, and hopefully she can give us a better idea of what will be covered on the course. So, Lorna, over to you. Thank you, Michael. Hello, everyone. Every time we speak to people, we're passing on messages and information. We hope that they will listen to it and act upon it. Unfortunately, this doesn't always happen. People drift away, they misunderstand and misinterpret messages, or they may think they know the answer anyway. To ensure that people absorb the messages, we need to consider how we convey them. Take a look at all the reasons why we are speaking, and we often use more than one of these at a time. What we tend to do is we concentrate on the content but we don't think too much about the delivery. To be an effective communicator and presenter, we need to think about three specific areas. We need to consider that perception is more powerful than fact. We need to vocalize the message more effectively. And we need to use positive body language and not send out negative messages. Taking perception as being more powerful than fact, we know that the first impression is based entirely on appearance. I want you to take a look at the next two slides and give me your opinion on who you think is dressed correctly. So first of all, take a look at these, at these three gentlemen. Quite a variety of outfits here. And if we take a look at the lady, it is, again, we've got three different opportunities of dress. Now, each one of them is, in fact, correct. It doesn't matter what they're wearing, so long as they're smart and appropriate for the business that they are involved in. What we must try to avoid is something that isn't always smart and certainly isn't always appropriate. What we need to do to overcome our nerves and focus the listening on what we are saying is we need to allow time for that first impression. So considering that we've got the dress correctly for whatever job we are doing, what we can then do is use three simple steps when making a presentation, giving a report or a briefing to ensure that we do in fact draw that listening in. Once we've got past the first impression, we now come to the second impression. And it's not an impression that most people think about. We all talk about the first impression, but not the second. The second impression takes place the minute you open your mouth. You are judged on your confidence, your professionalism, your knowledge, and your preparedness for whatever it is you are speaking about. Now, we can adjust how we are creating that second impression. We're not talking about accents, we're talking about how you actually speak. The four areas that I work with people on are the four that you can see there in relation to your voice, pace, projection, pitch and pause. And I'm going to share two of them with you today so that you get an idea of what will make a difference to how people listen to you. Think about the speed at which you speak, pace. If you speak too fast, people will simply switch off and stop listening. 
because they can't absorb the information at the rate that you're giving it to them at. They will come back and listen to you again, but they're missing chunks of information. Speak too slowly and people don't listen because truly it's boring. Speak somewhere in between and you'll find if that in between is still only one speed, it also becomes boring and people will stop listening. To engage the listening and to keep people listening, you need three speeds of speaking in a very short space of time in a pattern and you can hold people's listening for as long as you are speaking and you will find that they go away with the complete information that you've been sharing with them. And I will um, teach you that specific technique if you decide to come on a course at the PGA. Now let's take a look at another one. Your pitch, your inflection in your voice, your tone of voice. Let's talk about inflection. The variety and the rise and fall of your voice holds attention. It is a movement up and down and if you look at the next slide you'll see that the natural movement that we generally use is at the top. It's not very much, it just goes up and down slightly. The lower uh, picture is the picture of a voice over performer's voice inflection. And what will happen if you increase the width of the loops, you too will not only engage the listening more specifically, but it's also a very strong persuading technique. So there's two for you to go away and work on already. Now if we move to the next area, which is using your positive body language, which we can um, use in such a way that it builds relationships and helps us to interact, we need to again look at four specific areas. We need to look at your stance, what you're doing with your feet, because your feet are your biggest giveaway as to how you feel. We need to look at your hand gestures, and your hand gestures literally should start the minute that you open your mouth. We need to look at eye contact, and we need to consider whether or not our face is backing up what we are saying. So what I want you to do now is have a quick look at feet. Men and women do th completely different things with, your, with their feet when they start to speak to people. Men tend to step backwards and forwards or side to side. They can move around in a circle, they can sway the body, they even on occasions practice a wiggle that I relate to golf. That little movement when you're just leveling up to shoot the ball. Women on the other hand either stand with their ankles crossed or their feet very close together. And either way they're going to fall over after a very short time. What then happens is that men and women move into the same position, which is one foot out and leaning on the hips. Now if you do that, you tend to have a slightly lopsided body and you don't tend to look very professional. That doesn't mean that you can't use that specific technique when you want to change the atmosphere in a room and you move from something serious to something more relaxed and friendly but it's always best to start with your feet firmly on the ground. Wait until you've got the focus on you and then if you want to move around and you've got the space to move, then move but think about where you're moving to and you shouldn't, if you're using slides, walk across a live slide. Now let me move you on to hand gestures. I want you to think about hands and mouth being one system. What your hands will do is enhance and emphasize what you're talking about. Try to avoid repetitive movements. Watch out for those barriers where the hands go across the body or even behind the back creates a barrier. Use a mixture of conversational gestures and picture gestures. And I have to tell you, you should have between 5 and 15 different conversational gestures to draw the listeners in and direct those gestures towards the listeners. It isn't much use if your hands are speaking to each other. So there's two areas, two, uh, four areas for you to have a look at and to have a think about and hopefully you will put them into practice and see how effective even those can be without the other ones as well. And I'll leave you with a 
a quotation by Paul J. Mayer. Paul was the, is, is the founder of LMI, Leadership Management International, and he states that communication is the human connection and it is the key to personal and career success, something we should all think about a lot more. Back to you, Michael. Thanks, Lorna. I think you've given us uh, a very good overview of what will be covered on the uh, on the seminar. And uh, if it's okay, I've got a few questions. If that's okay. Yes, of course. Um, what I mean, I think it's fair to say that PJ professionals don't have one specific role which they all do. The one thing they all have in common is that obviously they're all PGA qualified, but some of them are coaching, some of them work in the retail environment, some of them are, are director of golf positions. Uh, I mean, it, some of them are course managers. You know, they, there's no one fit job. I mean, do you think this would be relevant to, to all professionals regardless of what position they're in? I most certainly do, Michael. Uh, everybody is communicating messages, regardless of what they do. They want to get their messages across. They want to get the information taken on board. They want what they are saying to be acted upon, whether it's selling or whether it's you know taking on board instruction. It doesn't matter. And most of the time, out of the eight skills and techniques that I work with people on, People have got two to four of them demonstrated reasonably well. But that means that there's a fair number not being used. And we have to ask ourselves, how much more successful would we be if we could, in fact, use them all? So regardless of who it is or what position they hold, we're all communicating. We all want the responses to be good. We all want to get some positive moving forward on what we're talking about. So the more we can use skills and techniques that that achieve that for us, the better every situation is going to be. So no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Everybody in every field of business really does need these skills. I mean, presumably in what you do, you've met, you've come across a lot of people that have a fear maybe of public speaking. I guess a lot of people will actually, when they see this course, think about it purely as public speaking, as talking to large audiences, although that may not be the case. As you say, you might just be talking to your small team. But what would you say to someone who perhaps has a fear of speaking and would this help their confidence to go on this course? What I mean, what will be covered? And Yes, it does. And I, I think you could almost place the, the word fear, uh, replace it with terror in some particular cases. People do have a natural fear of standing up and speaking to a group of people because there is so much resting on the outcome and whether or not they make mistakes, whether or not they can get their messages across so that people do really want to listen. So confidence comes into it a lot. And the more, pe more confident people are, the better presentation or communication or meeting that, um, in which they're involved they will achieve. So yes, using these eight skills does increase confidence and the more they are used, the more the confidence grows. And looking at why it grows, it has to be said that it is because whoever is communicating and using these skills gets a better response. In reading that better response, we automatically work harder at the skills and techniques, and we get an even better response. So in a way, it's a continual building the whole time. But it builds confidence within a very, very short time. Okay, brilliant. And really just to kind of finish up then, what if, if you were to sum up uh, your course, what do you think, what are the reasons a PJ professional should attend your seminar? What, you know, straight out of the, uh, straight when they come out, what can they go away and think, I'm better at this now? How is this going to help me? Um, what would you say there? Well, let's take the three C's. They will be more confident, they will be more competent, and they will have far more credibility in any role that they happen to have when they're putting across their messages and their information. It is amazing the gravitas that it gives to people. So it, it, it's just an absolute, in my mind, it's an absolute necessity for everyone. And they'll go away at the end of one day with the tools to make it work immediately. Perfect, well thank you. And is there anything else you'd like to add before we end the webinar? I'd just like to say I hope to meet you soon for a seminar with me at the PGA.
Absolutely. So, um, Lorna, thank you for taking the time out to conduct the webinar with us today. On behalf of all the PGA members who are going to listen to this in the future, um, it's much appreciated, and we look forward to hopefully seeing you soon for a seminar. Uh, for PJ members who are watching this, if you do want to see Laura in action, please don't forget to go onto the Member Education homepage and register your interest for this seminar. So, Lorna, thank you very much.